This video is about trying Beta FSD version 12.3 in rural South Carolina and somewhat semi rural near Clemson University. Now, FSD accomplished something during this drive that was extremely impressive. My wife commented that it did not seem possible. You need to watch and see what I'm talking about. This is the car I used to make the uh, video. It's a 2018 Tesla Model 3. We purchased it from my son in California a few weeks ago. Drove it back across the uh, country to South Carolina. And that's going to be the subject of another video. But uh, this car has hardware three in it. And I think you'll find this video very interesting and informative. And uh, please watch and check out our other videos also. Okay, I've got uh, Tesla FSD beta version 12.3. I've been using it about uh, a week and a half or so. Not real familiar, actually about a week, had the car about a week and a half. Um, but we live in a rural area on a farm in upstate South Carolina. Navigating these roads is a lot different than an urban setting. And I'm just, what I'm going to do is, I think FSD is great. I really want it to work. But I'm going to show you some of the problems that I'm having with it out here. So, and I don't have the latest update to 12.3.1 yet. It hasn't come through yet. And so what I'm going to do is I'm not going to try to start it from this driveway. I'm going to get out on that road and right down the, right down the road there is the first problem we'll run into. And I'll show you what that is. So let me go ahead and... Uh, Get out of here, got my seatbelt on. I think we're videoing, so we'll give it a try. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to navigate to Lowe's in Clemson, South Carolina. Navigate to Lowe's in Clemson, South Carolina. In 500 feet, bear left onto Mile Creek Road. Okay, now I'm going to engage the full self-driving. You can see the blue pattern there. This this actually steers fairly well. Not perfect, but I haven't had too many problems with that. But if you look up here, we're now speeding up. Left onto Mile Creek Road. Now, don't know what happened there, but that was definitely a, a problem. So let's send a message. Don't know what happened. The car just suddenly veered to the right. Okay, now when it comes up here to this stop, see what a shallow angle it is, how a car just came by. There is no way to see. And there's a vehicle coming. That's what I've got a problem with. You gotta be very defensive here because people come flying around that curve up there. I mean, racing practically and uh, they come pretty fast down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull out here by myself and uh, I'm going to send a message if it'll take it. Oh. Well, that, that ain't gonna work, okay. Let's go on, let's re-engage it. I need to send that message about that sharp angle not being able to see. Because, see, it's going 25, the speed limit is 35. Now, this was a construction area not too long ago. You can see the utility flags along the road, but uh, it should be going 35. So I'm going to bump it up to 35. I'm a very cautious driver, more than most, defensive driver. See how it gets over into the center line? I don't like that. It drives way too close to the center line. It's like it's afraid of going off the road on the edge. thousand feet, turn left onto Crow Creek Road. So I'm going to disengage and send a message. Driving too close to the center line. People in rural South Carolina routinely come across it, so you just can't do that here. Okay, it says it was set. I'm going to re-engage it. We'll see how now it handles turn stop. Left onto Crow Creek Road. So we're in full self-driving now. 
and obviously I like to look and see. I can't see from here. Now I can, it looks clear. It's gonna go for it. What gets me is when it pulls out, here comes the truck, but we were okay. It really floors it. I mean, it accelerates hard. It's reading the speed limit at 55. Now we're more or less centered in the lane, which is not too bad. Now, people always speed, so people will come up on me from behind. And uh, one of the things that I do, if someone's real close behind me and I'm coming up on a light that's about to change or something, I start slowing down way ahead of time to warn them that that's going to happen. Now this says I have to put slight pressure on the wheel, which I just did. I'll get those warnings. And uh, I've got to keep some kind of pressure on the steering wheel or it will, you know, it won't work. So there's a truck approaching on the right. we got a car in front of us. down here a little bit we're going to come up on a four-way stop this gets real interesting it's not too bad turning but when it thinks it's its turn to to go for it like straight ahead it will floor it through the intersection but you can't do that here because people don't always take their turn and don't always obey the laws you have to just always be on the edge and use a little caution going through a four-way stop South Carolina probably still does. I know a few years ago had, the, I believe, the worst fatality rates in the country because of a complete disregard of the laws here. And uh, so this system has to be able to handle situations like that. Right now it's doing fine. It's driving okay. It's about the center of the lane, I guess. It seems a little short-sighted, like it, you, know, you should see that car way down there, but it doesn't show it on here. Now, whether or not it's accounting for it, I, you can't tell. It just doesn't render in the display. All right, we're getting close to our four-way stop. Now, the normal way this will probably direct me is, I believe, straight through here, but it might have me turn. Sure. Okay, it's slowing down. Not too bad. No cars right behind us. That car's turn, and that car's turn, and our turn, and see it floors it. I mean, it's fast. Luckily, it didn't hit that car, it backed off in time. You know, for, for right now, you cannot relax when you're using this. You've got to pay attention constantly. And uh, just driving down the road all by itself, it does great. Steering's good, no issues at all that I can see. It's, I don't think it's practicing enough defensive driving around other drivers and what they could and you do. I mean, I've had them, my wife and I have been run off the road several times by people passing and coming over in our lane. We had to actually get off the road to keep them being hit. They come around curves in your lane. They come around or come over hills in your lane. So you always have to be aware of that stuff. And uh, I have a, Luckily, haven't had to see how this does with something like that. So, you know, hopefully they've taken that into consideration. Like I said, I may sound negative on all this, but I really want it to work. It would be such a benefit 
to disabled and elderly people. It would just be amazing if they can ever get this to work and for a reasonable cost. In one cost. mile, they'll ride on to North Main Street. Okay. We're going to be coming up on, I think it's a yield up here. Maybe a stop sign if you turn left, and I think a yield if you're turning right, I believe. And the speed limit slows down to 30 here. Now, since everybody speeds here, since so reading 50, which was the speed limit, it's still reading 50. The speed limit says 30 there. It's slowing down to 30. But because you get run over or even possibly get shot if you go the speed limit in rural South Carolina, I'm going to speed it up a little bit. And... Uh, I think the speed limit actually could be faster here. It doesn't need to be 30 right through here, but that's what it is. So it is following the speed limit. I've got it set now, adjusted it up with this little wheel here to 38. And just looking for any issues, don't see any right now. Now when we come on up closer to the stop, I'm going to back it back down to the 30. down to 35 now it's down to 30 now max so like it's supposed to be according to the speed limit here comes a truck on the right okay now they're right on to north main street now there is a stop on the right it's not a yield so it's got to stop up here and look good now the other day it pulled out in front of a vehicle here coming from the left and it's going okay probably accelerating faster than it needs to and it's, this is a pretty wide lane here in this little town um, so it's doing okay it's pretty much in the center of it no issues here right now we're going to speed limit and if you drive over the speed limit in a little town in South Carolina do so at your own risk. Okay, it says in 0.6 miles we're going to be making a left turn, and there's a hill right there, so you've got to be very careful. Okay, I've got to put slight pressure on the steering wheel. Okay, I did, now it's okay. It's still turning on its own. So far, all the braking and turning and everything has been on its own. Except for the time that I disengaged earlier. This is not too bad. Uh, probably closer to the center line than I would like to be with no cars coming. It's not as much of an issue. In 1,000 feet, turn left onto Mud Ridge Road. It, You'll notice it speeded up to 35. That was the speed limit as we came out on the outside of this town limits there. I see the hill coming up. You've got to be careful here. Those people come flying up over there. They don't now not turn go on the speed limit. Road. Just putting this turn signal on. Still clear. It's making the turn. And it's good. That was good. It's accelerating hard right there. I think a little harder it needs to. I mean, that's not good on the vehicle and the tires and so forth. You could probably ease off. I gotta check. I had put this on chill mode the other day. I didn't check this morning to see if we were still on chill mode or not. But you can see, I mean, this thing steers okay. It will get you where you're going, even if you're a little nerve-wracked, but uh, it does do it. Now, yeah, this is a sunny day. What do we do in a pouring rain? I don't know. I haven't done this at night yet, so I haven't tried that. But we're doing okay right now. The speed limit's 45. It's going 45. See this caution sign says 35? I've noticed that it appears to ignore them. It doesn't slow down, and they don't show up on the render like they're not there, which I think is a little bit of an issue. And I've already sent a number of uh, disengagement messages about that. That yield sign was in case we wanted to turn left, which we 
did. And we're going to follow this down. We'll end up uh, going through the little town of Central, going to the Lowe's. We call it the Clemson Lowe's. It's kind of between Clemson and Central. Here's a guy standing there getting his mail. It's leaving him a lot of room, but it got way over here. Way more than it should have. Didn't need to do that. So I'm going to disengage. You got a little far from the, uh, you went way over the center line. The fellow getting his mail. That was more than was necessary. And I don't know if you knew whether a car was coming or not. I'm going back into full self-driving. At least it did recognize the fellow was actually in the, uh, over the pavement getting his mail. So that's better than ignoring him, as long as no one was coming. What I do in a situation like that is slow down, check behind me, make sure no one's trying to pass me at the moment, and get over if it's clear. And uh, but just slow down so I got things under control. itself right now. As you can see, other than my complaint about being a little close to the center line and back there going way over it, it drives itself as far as steering pretty good. It's got it all rendered out here. so no issues. Needs to come up where it can see. Okay. I guess no real issue there. Under, Other than it does accelerate awfully hard away from these stops. I think more than it needs to. Well, I understand, you know, once you've committed, sometimes it's best to go ahead and get out of the way. But uh, every situation is a little bit different. poison those things but we have almost no other way to get rid of it. Every now and then we have uh, about of them and right now we do so come to get some carpenter and uh, poison. Like I said I hate to use any kind of poison on anything but uh, they can really cause problems if you don't take care of them. We're still doing okay it's driving itself on the speed limit 45 since no one's riding my tail, I'm going to let it just go to the speed limit. I don't need to go any faster. I'm not in that big of a hurry. Luckily, fortunately, we have nice weather today. Some wisteria blooming. Okay, a caution sign said 35. It probably won't slow down. And it didn't. It slowed slightly in the curb, but it didn't slow down to 35. So basically ignores those signs from what I can see. situation here. Cars parked right by the road. A couple coming across that bridge. Needs to slow down. Could be a fisherman about to get out of his vehicle. I probably would have slowed a little bit more. I didn't disengage. 
Speed limit is now 35. Side saying slow down to 30 in the curve. We're still going 35. It did not slow down, just stay 35. That's what I mean. It ignores those caution speed signs. I'm not sure why they've chosen to make it that way. Here we got a 25 mile an hour caution speed sign around a pretty sharp turn. Not, it's a just a sharp curve, not a turn. Slowed down a little bit, down to 29, 27. Okay. And uh, speeding back up. give them credit. It can steer itself pretty well. Now I'm anxious to try the version 12.3.1 when I have access to it. It's supposed to be a little better. Now that it's neural net and everything's being done by AI and what have you, advancements should mile, come a lot quicker. Go right on to Gasaway Street. Vehicle coming. It went over slightly more to the right. That was good. That's what I would have done. You always have to anticipate people will do something dumb or aggressive. Either one. Both those things happen. sign warning. I don't think we're in a school zone though, but a school bus could be here. Uh, as far as I know, the speed limit is still 35, I believe. That's what it's going. Okay, sign says Central Town Limit. Speed limit 35. Time to drink some iced tea. Right, we're coming into a town and I see somebody on a bicycle down there. Now see, the render doesn't show that, but I can see them perfectly well. And I would probably slow down more here to 25. That's what the sign said. And it is. It recognizes it and slowing down to 25. see what it does about this bicyclist. Now bear right on to Gasaway Street. Now, close to this, this close to a stop, I would not pull up beside the bicyclist. I would now not. turn right on to Megan Bridge Road. No problem so far. The bicyclist indicated he's turning left. Most of them ignore stop signs and what have you. But Okay, we're clear. It's turning right. Now, In down 500 here. feet, turn left onto Malding Road. Yeah, so we're going to turn left down here. Now turn left onto Malding Road. Nobody's coming, which is unusual. Usually, well, there is a car coming, but it's, it's probably okay. I would have probably done the same thing. It was far enough away and not going that fast. So it's doing okay now. To remember to keep some pressure on the steering wheel, or it will fire me. I wish I had a way of uh, just recognizing whether or not you're attentive rather than having to keep your hands on the steering wheel.
crossing some railroad tracks. It's going to be interesting to see what it does. over these tracks. I'm going to stop and look or just go across them. The lights, okay. Now turn right onto West Main Street. Let's see. It didn't stop and look. Of course, it's not really required to. Now it's stopping on its own. It's going to make sure it's clear, then do a right on red. And it's doing it a little close to the curb. It could have scraped the curb. Now we got to get in the left lane. It's doing that okay. We're going to be coming up on a left turn up here past the light. 1,000 feet, turn left onto Isaac Lena Trail. Now, if you were to just follow this road a couple miles down, you'd be right in the middle of Clemson University. This is not the turn. It messed up. This is not where it's supposed to turn. It made a mistake. Let's see what it does. Essequina Trail is the next road down. There's no light there. It's just down there about where that semi is. So I'm anxious to see what it's going to do when the light changes. There won't be an arrow here, probably. But it's going to have to go down there and change directions somehow. Unless this is a shortcut I'm un unaware of. They said it was going to turn on the Issaquina Trail, and it didn't do it. It turned here. Okay, this is kind of a college. Uh, now turn left onto Sumter Lane. Yeah, it's turning around. This is apartment dwellings for Clemson students, and this uh, there's another college. Now make a U-turn to stay on Sumter Lane. Well, I'm not touching it. It's doing it. Let's see if it hits a curb. No, but it was close. Okay. Interesting. You realize it made a mistake. And now it's turn left on West Main itself. Street. That's one of the cat buses they have around here. It's people can ride, and a lot of them are electric, zero emissions. But that one's not. Okay. Here's our road. Here's our turn. Now turn left onto Isaac Queen Trail. Somebody jogging over there on the left. They got it's got to be careful. That person is going to have the right of way. But he stopped. Well, the, the guy, the jogger, the pedestrian stopped. I guess it was okay to turn. Because he didn't trust the drivers, and I don't blame him. So, speed limit is 35 here. I've noticed when it turns on these roads where it's not sure about the speed limit, it starts out at 25, I guess until it sees the speed limit sign. Um, it's not like it has anything in the system that knows the speed limits on all the roads. At least not these minor roads like this. I think the major highways it does. But not sure. But I have noticed that. It's not a major problem. But if you got somebody right on your tail and it's going 25, they're going to get upset. It's best to always treat other people and drivers with as much respect as possible. And that's just the right thing to do. So you just got to be careful how you interact with people. Okay, this is an unusual four-way stop. The streets, let's see if it stops itself. Somebody getting on the bus up there. Okay, it said I have to take over. It wouldn't let me uh, use full self-driving here for some reason. And I don't blame it. And you'll see here, this stop, the roads are not aligned like a normal 
four-way stop. They come in at angles and are offset. So I may not be able to use any more full self-driving down to the lows, but it's right down the road. It's not very far. Okay, I gotta stop. That person has right away. Now it should be my turn, but see, I'm gonna get relatively slow and look in case some crazy person's running the stop sign. I think we're okay. I can see if I can go back into full self-driving. No, it ain't gonna let me. I'll have to stop and then in 1, feet, for this drive, left onto after I record. to return home, it'll probably let me. So this is on my own here. So uh, I can't stop that camera right at the moment, but I'll edit this part out of it. Now turn left onto Tillamook Court. So I'm driving myself here. Now here at uh, Lowe's, apparently I didn't have my hands on the steering wheel enough. It says auto steer <coughs> beta and full self-driving beta will no longer operate if autopilot disables three additional times. Well, I'm going to have to do a better job of keeping my hands on the wheel. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please like the video and subscribe. We'll be coming out with some more of these in the near future. And I was very impressed. As you can see, there is some development work that still needs to be done, but this FSD has come a long way. I'm really anxious to try out the 12.3.1.